we, I think for social media platforms to be concerned. Gentlemen's time has expired. Uh, yeah, repeat, without objection, these uh, documents are entered into the record. We now recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to continue along, in a sense, the line we've been on just now. Mr. Taibbi and Mr. Schellenberger, I'll ask both of you, is it fair to say Russia is a bad actor who is trying to do everything they can to undermine confidence in the United States government and in our form of democracy? I think that's a fair statement, yes. Okay, are you familiar with the organization uh, in Europe, the Global uh, Engagement Center? Yes, well, it's, a, that's a, that's a it's, it's an American. It's State Department, I'm sorry, but are you familiar with the Global Engagement Center's use of European and other sources to, uh, uh, to in fact, determine the, where Twitter files should or shouldn't be, uh, if you will, taken down thousands of names and, and Twitter files, correct? Um, I'm not sure you, um, that, that GEC, uh, Global Engagement Center is, is uh, taking down Twitter files. I, I actually wasn't aware of that. I'm sorry. Well, Twitter and the FBI have used this, this organization and their funding well, let, let, me, let me go on to another, another stay, on, stay on the path I was on. Uh, you, you commented that the, the scale mattered. Okay, would you elaborate on scale mattering uh, in the attempt to uh, undermine free speech? A absolutely. If, if I could take this. Yep. You know, so a, a great example of this is a report um, that the Global Engagement Center sent to Twitter um, and to members of the media and other platforms about what they called the pillars of Russian disinformation. Now, part of this report is what you would call, I think you would call traditional, hardcore uh, intelligence gathering, where they made a reason, evidence-based case that certain sites were uh, linked to Russian influence or linked to the Russian government. In addition to that, however, they, they also said that sites that, quote, generate their own momentum and have opinions that are in line with those accounts are part of a propaganda ecosystem. Now this is just another word for guilt by association. And this is the problem with the whole idea of trying to inter uh, identify uh, which, which accounts are actually the Internet, Russian, uh, Internet Research Agency and which ones are just people who followed those accounts or retweeted them. Twitter initially did not find more than a handful of IRA accounts. It wasn't until they got into an argument with the Senate Select Intelligence Committee that they came back with a different answer. Okay, so scale matters, but let me go through a couple of quick questions that I, I think are part of the reason that we have this Select Committee. Uh, this country has political parties and people from the, what one might call the extreme left and extreme right. Uh, and even Congress has people that might be considered outside the main street of Republican and Democratic thinking. Those people speak regularly and they have since our founding, is that correct? Yes. And the ACLU and journalists almost always support their right to say what they believe even if you disagree. Absolutely. And our Constitution says we will make no law to restrain exactly that kind of free speech. Yes. And that includes people who promote the idea that we should redistribute all wealth uh, in a communist type way. As a matter of fact, we still have a communist party in the United States. Isn't that correct? It is. Okay, so the limit of free speech historically has been incitement to violence or anarchy, the actual overthrow of a government. Anything other than that is historically covered by the First Amendment. Yes. So when we look at the very nature of these, the State Department funding to affect domestic U.S. speech, was that speech outside the legal bounds? Did it call for insurrection or other criminal activities that would destroy our government? No, I mean, we did not. I mean, I'm not say, we're not saying that that didn't happen, but we're describing people having political arguments online. Right, so let me just, uh, because I, my time's limited like everyone's. So it suffice to say that the, every bit of the speech, or virtually every bit of the speech, whether foreign or domestic, 
uh, online fell within the normal protections of the First Amendment and the very act of federal dollars being used to stifle that speech is in fact historically what we would consider an indictment against the First Amendment protections. Correct. That is why we have this subcommittee. That is why we are here today. Thank you. I thank the gentleman, and a great point. I now recognize the gentlelady from Florida for five minutes.